It's Erin from Silver River Museum. Imagine you were living in Florida 500, 1,000, even 2,000 years ago. That might be your next meal and your only chance of survival. Do you think it would be important for you to understand a little bit about science if you wanted to catch that deer? What about force and motion? Take a look at this image of a Temuquin. What weapon was he carrying that would have allowed him to both provide food for his family and protect himself? Do you see the bow and arrow? There's a lot of science that goes in to successfully shooting a bow and arrow to both catch your next meal and protect yourself. Join me in digging a little deeper into the concepts of force and motion in archery. Let's go do an experiment. We're here in my backyard to explore a little bit more about archery and force and motion. So I have my son Ethan. today and he's going to help us out. He's got his bow ready. So to understand a little bit about how a bow works, you need to think of it like a spring, all right? You can see that the piece of wood actually making the bow is curved. And when Ethan, watch the curve of the bow, when Ethan pulls back on his bow, the wood actually bends even more. And it's got a lot of energy in that bent wood, which can exert a force. Now, depending on the person and how long their arms are, they have a certain draw length. That's how far back on the string they can pull the bow. So, do you think how far we pull the string on this bow will have an effect on its force. You know, there's actually a way that we can measure force of the string of this bow. I have a tool here, all right, and this is called a spring scale. This one's digital, so we can actually see the readoff on the screen, and we can pull something with the hook, and it will measure the force in pounds. So how about we measure the force of your bow string at different draw lengths? Sure. And then All what right. we're gonna do is let's pull it back to a couple different lengths All right. to see what happens with force. Right. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna pull your bow back to 10 inches, which is not very far, mm. okay? And I'm gonna hold that, and it looks like at 10 inches, your bow is at 3.7 pounds of force, okay? 3.7 pounds of force is what this bow could exert at 10 inches if you pull it back 10 inches. What do you think would happen if we pull it back more than 10 inches? Uh, like 15? Yeah, should we pull it back to 15 yeah, inches? Sure. All right, let's see what happens to the force if we pull this back to 15 Watch inches. The screen, guys. All right, here we go. So now I've got it to 15 inches on my tape measure, and we're at 10 pounds of force. So, the force increased, didn't it? Yeah. We pulled it back a little bit further, the force increased. Want to keep going? Sure. How many so we're going to pull the bowstring to 20 inches, and I'm going to help the bow along, and then I'm going to let go, and I'm going to read the force. It's at 18 pounds. So if we pull the string back 20 inches, we get 18 pounds of force. Maybe we should do 25. Okay, okay. let's do 25. Ready? All right, we're gonna pull the bow eh. all the way to 25. Eh. And we are at 25 pounds of force. So, let's recap. If we pull the bowstring a little bit, we get a little bit of force, right? If we pull the bowstring a lot, 
we get more force. But what does that mean for an arrow? Should we test it? Sure. Okay, so, so we're ready to shoot some arrows and we're gonna shoot them with Ethan pulling his bow back at the same draw length that we measured the force of. So he's going to shoot arrows at a draw length of 10 inches, 15 inches, 20 inches, and then I'm not sure that his arms go 25 inches, so I might get a chance to shoot for that. And here's what we've got set up on his bow to help us know when to stop. See this string? I've marked different draw lengths and I'm going to tie the string to his bow string and that way he'll know where to stop. Here we go, we've got the ribbon tied so now you can see when he draws his bow, he'll stop at 10 inches. So the first trial is going to be at a draw length of 10 inches and we're going to see how that affects the motion of this arrow. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Right, Ethan. So now if we want a way to measure the motion of these arrows, what we're going to do is we're going to use this white crayon and we're going to mark how far they went into the box. Right. This is called a penetration test. So go ahead and take this crayon and go ahead and mark each of your three arrows and let's see how far each one went into the box. So let's remove the first arrow. All right, and that went into the box. 10 and a half inches. The second arrow went into the box four inches. And the third arrow went into the box five inches. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to repeat the test, but we're gonna increase your draw length to 15 inches, okay? All right, All right let's do it. was the trial for the draw length of 15 inches. So we increased the amount of force. I wonder what happened to the motion of the arrows when we increased the amount of force. All right. The first arrow went in 12 inches. Man, a foot. A whole foot. The second arrow went in 12 and one quarter inches. Actually, this one went in 10 and a half inches. That's still quite a bit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was for the draw length of 15 inches. Let's increase the force a little bit more. Look at the arrows. So we're marking the arrows for your maximum draw of 20 inches. There we go. All the way down to my fingers. A little bit further. Okay, 19 inches for this one. This one is at 17 inches. And this one is at 15 inches. Okay, so we've reached your maximum draw length. You think I can draw it back to 25 inches? Maybe. All right, we're gonna do our final test with me shooting the bow at maximum draw of 25 inches. So this one penetrated the target 26 inches, 22 inches, not bad, and All right. 23 inches. Okay, so we've done the experiment and we've collected our data, but what does that data really mean? What you have in your data tables is known as raw data. And to really understand it, scientists need to take it and they need to dig a little deeper into it. And one of the ways that we can better understand our data is by putting it in a graph. So let's take a minute and let's put that data in a graph. Go ahead, do it. So take a look at this graph. What do you notice about this graph? Do you see how most of your data points are clustered together? Go ahead and circle 
each cluster of data. Now, if we look at the clusters that we circled, we could draw a line between each one. This tells us about a relationship. If you'll notice on this data, as we increase the force of the bow, the amount that the arrow penetrated the target increased. That's the same thing as the motion of the arrow. So that tells us about the relationship between force and motion. It tells us that as force increases, motion also increases. Now there's one thing on this data that doesn't fit into our cluster. Now you'll notice you have one data point on your graph that can't be circled neatly in your cluster. Sometimes we have data that doesn't quite fit with the other trials, and we call these outliers. Now for our experiment, we only did three trials. To have better data, we would have done many, many more trials. But if I'm being honest with you, Ethan's arm was getting pretty sore after the trials that it took to film this video. So we need a lot more time. The concepts of force and motion don't just apply to archery. They apply to all objects around us. So I challenge you to take note of this in your everyday life. How do these laws of science play into your life? Thank you for joining me. Be sure to tune in to our live Zoom sessions. The schedule's posted. And if you miss our live Zoom sessions, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll post the Zoom sessions there so you can see what you missed. The first one related to this activity will be a design challenge. It's something that you can participate in at school or at home. Classes will have an opportunity to submit an entry and the winning class will receive some cool museum swag. So thanks again, and I hope to see you soon.